Hello, everybody. It's Ron and Hope Unfiltered, real, raw, and relevant. <laughs> what are you doing? Your literally, eyes jumping. Literally, when they started to count down three, two, one, my eyes just started doing like that. You know right what there. they say that is? What, like a rest? Mm-hmm. Well. Have you been it. lacking your rest? I lacked rest last night. I didn't like, have a whole lot of rest. I went to bed about 2.30. I know. I remember. And, uh. Didn't have a great restful night of sleep. So you said eyes, I snored. That's pretty consistent. <laughs> that's not a, that's not an anomaly. You snore. I don't snore at all. Lately, you hadn't been snoring. You have traded your snoring for coughing. I cough because I've been sick. Yes. Right. I'm getting on the backside of it. I'm about over it. So, yeah. But I didn't sleep a lot last night, and um, you know, sometimes. I think when you're 30, you can overcome those things a whole lot easier. When you miss a good night's sleep, when you get our age, it tends to follow you a little bit more. Yeah. Let's tell them what we're talking about today. And I don't want them to turn it off because we're not going to, we're going to, I'm not going to preach an Easter message. Everybody's going to hear Easter messages all weekend. Mm -hmm. But you wanted to talk about Easter and maybe, I think, maybe some of the controversy surrounding it a little bit, I think, is where you well, kind of wanted to go. No, I just wanted to talk about Easter in general and all that swirls around with Easter. Easter is the fundamental of the Christian faith. It's uh, it's it's the centerpiece yes. of humanity, and it's the centerpiece of time. You know, even time is divided B.C. and A.D. Mm -hmm. Right. The cross stands between two eras of time. Right. And I don't even care if if they're an atheist, they'll tell you it's the year twenty twenty four. Well, twenty twenty four after what? Right. After the death of Jesus Christ. So I want to talk a, a little bit about, uh, you know, we, we can talk about some of our traditions and things and that and other. I don't, I don't want y'all to leave and say, oh, they're just going, they're going to talk about the resurrection. I'll get that Sunday. No, I want to go somewhere a little bit different. I want to talk about this generation's approach to these things. Can I start off with the essence of the gospel? Yes, absolutely. Let me, give me, give me, it's going to take me about four or five minutes. I can't do this in 60 seconds. <clears throat> <clears throat> the essence of the gospel is God is love. God makes two declarations of himself. He's a spirit, and his worshipers must worship him in spirit, and he's love. To my, off the top of my head, that's the, you know, the, the two declarations God makes about his being. In other words, what is he made out of? His substance is spirit, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and his substance is love. <clears throat> love is not love if it has nothing to love. You know, there's got to be an object. There's an object of love. There's an object of affection. And God, because he is love, by, his very, by the very nature of love, has to have something to love. God created man in his likeness and in his image as the object and the affection of his love, mm -hmm. as the expression of who he is. And made that physical expression in his image and uh, walked with Adam in the cool of the day, gave him a physical earth. The earth mirrored heaven. Uh, Adam mirrored his heavenly father. And I've always taught when I teach the kingdom, earth was never meant to operate apart from heaven. Mm -hmm. It was meant to operate just like heaven. That's why the first place was called Eden. And Eden means paradise or heaven. So Eden was heaven on earth. I don't believe Eden was a place. Mm -hmm. I don't think Eden was a geographical location. Mm -hmm. They have State unearthed so many biblical cities. They've earthed, unearthed so many ancient cities, but they've never found Eden. Why? I think Eden was an environment. Right. I, I think the earth. State of being. Yeah, the earth was Adam's, not a little corner in the earth called Eden. I believe there was an, there was a, there was an environment that created paradise for him, and it was the environment of God. Uh, Adam's environment was the presence of God. That was his environment. That was his heaven. That was his paradise. Uh, and people say, oh, you know, the great theological questions. Well, if God is love and God is good, why is there so many things in the world that right. just suck? Why, why, is, kids die? why is there evil? Why is there, why is there sickness? And why right. is there why is there there's so much crap in the world? Ah, there sure is. But you gotta understand love reciprocated has to be chosen. To be reciprocated. I've used this illustration 20 years of you and the kids. Uh, I don't. I hope you didn't ever have to do it. 
But, but like, let's say I went on an overnight trip and I preached at a conference and I got back the next day. And, you know, one of the kids riding a bike, the other one's throwing the ball, the other one's jumping on the trampoline. I don't want to drive up in the driveway and you call the kids and roll your eyes and say, well, your dad's here. Go hug him. You know, I, I need you to go at least, you know, try to hug your dad. I don't want that. I, I just, I don't want that. Because that's, they didn't choose to do that. Uh, but if I just drive up and they throw the bicycle down and the ball gets tossed in there and they jump off right. the trampoline and they come running and they grab my leg, there is nothing in the world like that moment because of what you're experiencing. You're experiencing love. That's what he, what Adam was given was the choice, Hope, to turn around and love him back. You don't have, I love you. You don't have to love me back. You can choose to. Mm -hmm. Here's how you make this choice. If you obey me, Anything that obeys loves me. If you disobey me, then basically when Adam took the fruit, whatever fruit it was, we call it an apple, but whatever fruit it was, when Adam took that fruit, he declared independence from heaven. Mm. Heaven is a country. Earth is a country. Earth declared independence from heaven, and the Bible makes it very plain that Satan became the god of this world. Now, I'm going to say some things right here maybe some people haven't heard because I don't know how many teachers try to go in this much depth. There's a difference between the earth and the world. The earth and the world are not the same thing. You preached a whole series on this. I preached it so good. a while back. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how much time I spent on it. So good. The earth and the world is not the same thing. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So God owns the planet, and he owns all the resources and everything mm -hmm. in the planet. So that's not in question. But the Bible says that Satan is the god of the world. The word, the word world actually is cosmos, and it means governing systems. Mm. So you have a planet that is governed by systems. It used to be governed by heaven's systems. Mm -hmm. Adam declared independence. Satan took over. So now you have the kingdoms of this world, world. not the kingdoms of the earth, the kingdoms of this world. That's why the Bible says, for God so loved the, the world, world, not the planet. For God so loved the, the world the cosmos. that he gave his own. So God so loves and cares about the way that the planet is run that he sent his only begotten son. So Jesus is not, ju is not just for God so loved people. God so loved the world. Yeah. So Jesus is not just the answer for people. Jesus is the answer Systems. to the system. Yeah. That's why Jesus said, I am the light of, of the, the world. world. I'm the knowledge of the world. I am, can illuminate you who are functioning in a system that is dark mm -hmm. and corrupt. I'm the light of the world. You end up in, this is a lot of stuff being covered, Revelation where it says the kingdoms of this world have, have become, become the kingdoms, the kingdoms of, of our, our God, God and his Christ and his anointed. That's us. Yeah. So the kingdoms of this world, at some time or another, there is a divine shift that is supposed to take place where the governing systems and all of its corruptions and even the wealth thereof is laid up for the righteous and the system shifts and becomes run by God's anointed. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that's going to happen. There are people who think we do that, then Jesus comes back. Or there are people that think that Jesus comes back to do that. Right. Uh, the kingdom believe there's some work we're supposed to do, and Jesus comes back to a bride without spot or wrinkle. There's another group that thinks, you know, it's lost and it's going to hell, and only Jesus can save this thing. But Romans 8 says that the earth will be delivered up from its corruption into the glorious hands of the children of God. Yeah. So there's a lot, you know, just Jesus going to come back and take care of everything? <laughs> he said, occupy till I come. There's a lot of motivation and militants that's been taken away from the church because we just get in our stained glass buildings and sing, please hurry up and come back and get me out of this life that I'm powerless to change. Right. And Miserable. That's not who we were supposed to be at all. So you want to interject anything right here? You want me to keep going or you want me to slow down? Well, let's do take it? a break. Do we have a sponsor yes, today? Yes, we, we need to take a break. <laughs> this is good. It's deep. But we're going to come back and break it down. But right now, we're going to thank our sponsor, Nutrafol. Uh, hair thinning you, is <laughs> complicated. Ron says, thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. Guys. He loves Nutrafol. Tell him about our son right quick before you. Oh, before that is you, so uh, funny. Uh, 
um, our oldest son, Chase. I started thinning about, what, 10 years ago in the back? I started, my hair started yeah. thinning some. Yeah, so about <laughs> two weeks ago. He's 29. Chase sends me a picture bent over the top of his head. <laughs> and he goes, us. am I going bald? <laughs> And I text him back. I'm like, Chase, no, you're not going so no, bald. No, we're just going to send you some Nutrafol. I did. I said, but I will send you some Nutrafol because your hair is thin. And he <laughs> said, I can't go bald, Mom. I can't. He said, that's gross. Oh, me. He said, I'll look gross. But anyhow. That's funny. <laughs> hair thinning is complicated. Uh, the problem is it's actually much bigger than your hair alone. Like your skin. Hair is a reflection of your health. And internal factors can impact the way <coughs> that your hair looks feels, and grows. With Nutrafol's hair wellness quiz, you can get your personalized hair health plan today. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement with over 1 million people seeing thicker, stronger, faster growing hair with less shedding. Nutrafol's three minute quiz determines which underlying root causes are keeping you from reaching your hair potential. By analyzing your lifestyle, biology, hair history, as well as environmental triggers, Nutrafol creates a hair health plan that is tailored to your hair's needs. Nutrafol's hair growth supplements are physician formulated using drug free, high quality ingredients. They're recommended by 4,500 plus doctors and hairstylists nationwide. Purchase online, no prescription or doctor's visit required. Free shipping. And automated deliveries ensure you'll never miss a day. See results in three to six months. Start your hair growth journey today by taking Nutrafol's hair wellness quiz and get your personalized hair health plan today. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month's <coughs> subscription and free shipping at Nutrafol.com slash quiz when you enter the promo code R A H. Take the quiz and get started on reaching your hair wellness goals with Nutrafol today. Nutrafol.com. N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com slash quiz. Promo code R-A-H. That's Nutrafol.com slash quiz. Promo code R-A-H. All right, guys. Sorry for the cough during the ad, but like Hope said, I'm getting on the backside of this thing. But anyway... The essence of the gospel is you've got man is lost and the world is messed up. Right. Jesus is the answer. Yeah. Okay. That, that's the essence of the gospel. But God had already marked off the boundaries of dominion. Man has dominion in the earth. So if God is a spirit, he has no dominion in the earth because you got to have one of these. Flesh. you got to have flesh. Yeah. So then you have the immaculate conception, which Christmas ties in with Easter. Mm -hmm. You had God coming into the earth through the womb of a woman, but not born with the seed of a man, mm -hmm. born of the seed of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit overshadowing Mary, Mary, the Immaculate Conception, Jesus growing in wisdom and stature with God in men, God becoming a man. Yeah. And a man paying a horrific price, ultimately a crucifixion, giving up his life, mm -hmm. and then you've got his spirit, he gives up the ghost, and then you've got his body is laid in the tomb, but then you've got his soul, the Bible says, descends into Hades and preaches to all the tormented spirits from before the flood. So there had to be a crucifixion. <laughs> there had to be a payment. There had to be a for payment. For our sin. There's no removal of sin without blood. See here again, God has to abide by his own rules because he's a king. When a king speaks, the speak what he speaks is law. Right. So God is coming and abiding by his own rules. He don't even, you know what, I'm God, I'm gonna skirt right, this. Right, right. He he became a man and heaven emptied itself, the Bible says. And the Bible says that Jesus emptied his heavenly attributes to take on the lowly form of a man. Mm -hmm. The most humbling thing to become what he created. And then to pay the kind of price he paid and the humility and the suffering that went along with it. So many things right here, but the essence of the gospel is he got back up, and when he got back up, spirit, soul, body reunited. He led captivity captive, got the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And when I put my faith in him, there's always been the forgiveness of sins with pigeons, bulls, goats, and blood, but there's right. never been the removal. Right, right. Jesus removed Removes sins. sin. Yeah, he didn't for, just forgive them. Woo. They are no more. Yes. 
And uh, though your sins were scarlet, it's white as snow. snow. There's a clean slate. Yeah. So only the lamb that takes away the sin of the whole world, Jesus, could Spotless do that. Spotless lamb. And so, you know, we're halfway into our podcast. That is the gospel. It is. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of the kingdom. Different. Different story. A lot of teaching has to go with that. That's where you become discipled. Mm -hmm. Living in the kingdom is living the Jesus way. Yes. It is bringing the way heaven is governed to back earth. into your life, yes. into the earth. So that is something totally different. And Jesus said, don't go get people saved. He said, make disciples. Now Ooh. let's hit our present generation. Ooh. Let's hit our present generation. <laughs> he said, make disciples. He said, make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So salvation's first. Hope. I'm just. I'm, here's where I pick a fight. But you got. I've make given you the cycles. essence of the gospel. Now here, here's where we're gonna get down and we're gonna brawl a little bit. <clears throat> My generation and generations before me. I remember my dad's generation. I remember generation before him, Oral Roberts. I watched TV and heard preachers at least two generations before me. Preach the gospel unabashedly without shame. Mm -hmm. More of the nation than ever during those years claimed to be Christians. Right. The influence of the Christian community was warranted everywhere. People were scared to make decisions that would at be crossways against the Christian community because our influence in our nation was so powerful. Mm -hmm. The voting base was so powerful. Mm -hmm. The business base was so powerful. I remember years the malls didn't open up till after church was over. That's right. I remember when I played football in Little League, when we had Wednesday night services, we didn't have practice on Wednesday night to ensure no. the kids could go to church. This right here, I've got millennials and Gen Z looking at me probably right now like I landed from outer space. You know <laughs> why? Because they didn't know a day like that existed. Because now that we're scared to death to, offend to preach the gospel. We are in the offense generation. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you what it's done. It's infected the church. And the thing about it is church, when it's been affected by world, it don't realize it's been, been infected. No. Mm -mm. It doesn't see it. This we don't want to offend anybody but it's a you, worldly thing. Don't you think that started, though, with social media? <laughs> Absolutely. It started with— uh, Well, I think it because started Because everybody with, has an opinion. I think it started with millennials who wanted a whole different paradigm shift for church. Let, but, the, well, the for, <laughs> but, but, too, I think it's it, it flows in a parallel um, flow. Well the, well, the social media was going on during it their, is. During it their is. upbringing. And they saw how everybody's opinion on social media— Mattered can matter and how it sinks people you. and cancel you. They leave, they follow, yes. they unfollow, they turn. They can they make your life boycott. a living yes. hell. Their people are venomous people. Yes. And they see that right there. Okay, and they then, didn't want that. Then we move that over to church. Okay. And I don't believe any of this is bad intention. I'm not picking a fight with people. I don't think any of this is bad intention. I know a lot of people in these movements and they are good people. And these people live right, and these people want to do right, and these people can talk about Jesus with tears in their mm -hmm. eyes. But you, you know, Jesus said, make sure the light in you be not darkness. Mm. Light is knowledge, darkness is ignorance. Mm. He said, make sure what you, what you know is not ignorant. Truth. Yeah, it's like a stronghold. Yeah, make sure, make sure you don't think you're mm -hmm. doing right and you're doing wrong. Right. That's a powerful statement by it Jesus is. that nobody talks about. Make sure the information you have is not actually dark and you're preaching it like it's light. My God. Mm. Okay. And so here's what we have. We have a cancel culture. We have a culture everybody's offended by everything. Yeah. You now can be raked out ordering something at Burger King if you don't use a proper pronoun. <laughs> I mean, fist fights. I'm seeing them on Twitter. How did it start? Used improper pronouns. We saw a fight on an airplane. Yeah, I mean, 
because of the pronoun crazy thing. stuff mm-hmm. all these all these different ways you can get canceled anything political anything racial anything that has to do with the homosexual community just your even, own personal just, opinion just, just an opinion that you have, have much less a conviction that right. you have because of your faith people are scared to say anything because they're scared of the wrath yes it is that will come back it's upon venom. them so here's what we do we live the very life that Jesus warned us against people pleasing mm. Mm. We become people. The Bible says, "Be God pleasers yep. and not man pleasers." Don't do it for their eyes only. James talks about yeah. that in depth. And so, what we're doing is we are scared of people. Yeah, we are scared of people's reactions. Yeah. we're scared people's not going to like us. Come on, we're scared about, and we've taken that, shoved it right into the church, and we think it's a holy thing. It's a worldly thing. It is. It started in the world and infected the Mm. church. It didn't start in the church. It started in the world. Anytime you're afraid to say what Jesus said, (laughs) yeah, we got real problems. We got real problems. Number two, if you sit here and you don't want to offend anybody, you fundamentally, I'm going to look in the camera, do not understand the essence of the gospel. No. Jesus said, they hated me. They will hate you. They're going to hate you. And he said he was the rock of offense. Yep. The Bible says that Jesus is the rock of, of offense. offense to the disobedient. To the disobedient. So whenever you have a world corrupt with mm-hmm. Satan being the God of the world that is living in disobedience. God's way will offend you. When you, you speak the truth. Yes. Okay, what we, what we have now is we have a void of truth. We got people in churches that don't know what they believe about they abortion. Don't. They don't. We got people in churches don't know, don't have a clue how to vote. Mm-mm. We got people in church because there's no. Here's what God believes. Here's what. Here are the keys of the kingdom. Here is the way a man or woman of God conduct themselves. Right. Here is the way we function. Here is the way we behave as believers. None of that's being said. No. It's, it's still relationships it's and stuff. anxiety. Fluffy stuff. It's relationships. And so we got this whole two thousand pages of the Bible where God speaks and wants somebody to thunder. Through that microphone, thunder. He wants not give the us preachers motiva- to preach. He want, yeah. How will they know if and there's not a preacher? That's right. That's what that's what Romans says. Yeah. How will they know if there's not a preacher? And preaching has to do with a conviction. Preaching is not conversational. Right. The Bible says when Peter got through preaching, they were cut, cut to the heart. I, I you know, there is an element of my preaching I want to be. Informational. I want them to learn. Yeah, yeah. There's an element I want them to be inspired, and there's an element I want them to go. I got to get Ooh, right. Right. I remember that feeling I gotta as get a little, right. as a young girl. Yeah, I got to get right. Feeling like, oh, I got to make this right. I'd go to the altar every if, single if, church hope, service. If you can go to a church ten years and never had one Sunday where you feel like you need to change, yes, something is wrong. It is. Guys, I'm just telling you, something's wrong. If you leave just all oh, happy and everything wrong. feels good. Cause, cause some gra- churches are, some <clears throat> services are like that. Yeah. Grace, but my gra- goodness. Grace takes you like you are, but grace doesn't keep it you like you are. It don't leave you there. Because grace is not the power to stay the same. Grace is the power to change. change. And so somebody has got to be preaching, this is where we are, but this is where God wants us to be. Okay? Yes. When this hits their ears, it's going to offend. But you are not in charge of how they perceive it. No. You are in charge of speaking it. Then the Holy Spirit is in charge of what happens with that seed you just sowed into Mm -hmm. their life. I have Hindus all over my church. Yeah. Because we have so many Indians. We have a huge Indian population in the Bay Area. And we have our beautiful, precious Christian Indians who will bring family yes. members with them that are non-Christian. And I have to get up there and say, well, they believe in all of them. Mm-hmm. They, believe, they believe that there's a million ways to God. Okay? One way. So when I see them in there on purpose, there is no other name given among men. By which we must be saved, say the name of Jesus Christ. I have to say that. You do. Because it's the gospel. Now, I'm not in charge with what they do with that. And we act like there's no Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit takes that word and takes that person. Let me tell you something. When I left churches and I was sinning and I was in sin or a sinner, let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit. 
It's like I would close the door of my car and the Holy Spirit would yeah. get in the passenger seat. Okay, mm-hmm. let's talk about this thing. Mm-hmm. So we think that they because they didn't come back next Sunday, oh, we offended them. They are dealing deeply yes. with everything you said. You wanted to see them next Sunday or you offended them. He's Lord of the harvest. Yes, he not is. Not you. Yes, he is. He's Lord of the harvest. So however long it takes for that seed, that seed, it depends some on a plant. person's readiness. Yeah. There are some people that get saved and will change forever that day. They're done. They're tired of it. Yep. They're sick of it. And they want out some of plant, it. Some plants, okay? some water. And there's some others that are not ready to go there. Time. But they're now having to wrestle because the truth will yes. not let them go. But we don't stop preaching truth. <laughs> exactly right. It's got to be preached. It's got to be preached with some sense. Yeah, speak the for truth instance, in love, the Bible instance, says. Let me, let, me tell you, let me tell you what I mean about some sense. I had some bullying happen to me, Hope. I knew they were bullying me, and I knew who they were talking about because they didn't veil it very well. They were mm-hmm. kind of calling me out without calling me out. When the Supreme Court over, overturned Roe versus Wade, which is... Monumental and historic. Yes. Most people never thought it happened, especially in our lifetime. When that happened, you know, I was in a church about two days after that happened. Big church, big meeting. And the pastor got the mic and said, the curse has been lifted. And the place goes, you know what? And he's absolutely right. Yes, and we were grateful for it. There was a scourge of death. Yes. Across America, a nation who will kill its own. Okay? Yes. He was exactly right. Yeah. But he knew where he was at. Yeah. He was in a Bible center. He knew who was in the room, and he knew what kind of response he was going to get when he said it. Yeah. I'm in the Bay Area of California. There's no telling how many people in our church, Hope, in our church, you got to understand this, Bay Area, 97% unchurched. The 3% are Catholic. Evangelicals, I don't even know if they register mm-hmm. in, as a percentage in, in the place where we're with millions of people in the Bay Area, okay? So people were bullying me that I made no bold proclamation about that legal event. They want, they're bullying me, wanting to say something. And I finally, I got a chance to talk to one of them that was bullying me. I said, you know what? I said, I could have did what you did. I said, I could walk right back in the Bay Area church and said, the curse has been lifted. (laughs) And I said, and they'll get offended and they'll leave. And what have I done? I pleased you. Right. Why? Because they haven't had any truth. Yeah. You haven't taught and preached. Truth does not need to be released on the heels of political victory. Mm Mm-mm. Nope. So, one of my next series, okay, before you were formed, I knew you. Yes. Yeah. You taught the word. When you were in your mother's womb, I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. All of your days were ordained before uh, for you before one of them came to be. All of the days of your life are written in a book, Daniel chapter 9. And those people who are in my church that probably thought overturning Roe versus Wade was the worst was day in the world for women. Yeah. But love Jesus. But they haven't been taught. No. I'm sitting there and I can see in their mind, and I even had one or two of them tell me, said, Yeah. You're challenging everything I've been taught. Yeah. And you you even said, <laughs> I remember you saying when you were teaching that, you said, um, Republicans aren't right. Democrats aren't right. Because they talk about when is conception. Yeah, when is life? When, is life, yeah, when, when is does life, life start? You said, They're both wrong. Life started before you got here. Life started here. in heaven. It started in heaven. Yes. He you knew existed you then. before you got here. Yes. So if God had a plan before you got here, and then we take away the body and it's time to enter the earth, we have removed that plan. How many plans of God are absent in the earth right now? Mm. You see what I'm talking so about? So you spoke the truth, but <laughs> you spoke, spoke it truth, in love. I spoke it in love. I taught it. And you left and it let where? the Holy yes. Spirit do the and rest. And you left it. And I didn't do it on the heels of political victory so I can come in there and just tick everybody off. Right. You know? And so there's a way to preach the truth and not be totally, totally offensive. But the truth in its essence Is offensive. offends <laughs> when people aren't living it. Yes. 
There's and you no can't way around help it. it. And you can't so, help it. So the only way I cannot offend is embrace the life that you now live and tell you it's all right. So here's where we are. Our church numbers are big, but people who claim to be Christians in America diminishing. Dwindling. Christian culture in America has almost oh my disappeared. Oh, goodness. And it's hard our, to find. And our values are deteriorating mm-hmm. at a rate that no other generation, that every generation combined yeah, it's true. has not seen. Yeah. So that tells me as a church... We are not impacting our generation just because we got them in a building and gave them mm. a T-shirt and latte. And they're clapping and jumping up and down. The only thing that brings change is truth. And here's where I am at my church, and this is what I challenge everybody else. Hope we don't skip pages. No. Or words. There's not a page in that Bible I won't preach. Right. Not one. Even the ones I don't like. Yeah. Not one. So I'm concerned. We don't skip the Holy Spirit. I'm concerned that that sinner or saint, we have so many things we're scared to say. Yeah. I'm concerned that that the church has become... Why is a government making policies that spit in the face of Christians? Mm-hmm. Because they know there's not enough Christian impact up. and evidence to make a difference. Yeah. So they're not scared of you. That's why I told people, I said, the Bay Area has so many non-Christian laws, literally laws. And I said, why? Because the Christians don't make up a significant enough mm-hmm. part of the voting mm-hmm. base for a politician to care. Yeah, But lives are hanging <laughs> in the balance every day that we're silent. And, and I, we don't preach truth. I, I don't know what the answer to this is because, you know, I will tell you another thing about the generation uh, after me that's different than the ones before me. We looked to fathers. Mm -hmm. We hunted fathers. We wanted to hear the voice of a father. We wanted to carry their briefcase. I've noticed the generation after me, they listen to each other. Mm. That's like going to your family reunion to find your wife. Yeah, they they listen to peers. They don't go to fathers. Mm -mm. Uh, if If you told me to name, you know, Ten of the most um, popular millennial pastors right now, I could not tell you. I could tell you mentors they have. Mentors, somebody who helped them build their church and devise their system Mm. and helped them organize their organization. But somebody who has fathered them Mm -hmm. and schooled them in their theology, which I'm hearing some of the craziest theology I've ever heard, who's, who's anchored their character who anchors them right from wrong, who reels them back in, who keeps them humble, and who ensures that they're preaching the gospel and not just all this other fluff. I don't know who those fathers would be in these guys' lives. And that's You've not a tried great... to be some of their fathers, <laughs> but no, they won't let it. And, and <laughs> they won't let it happen. And they're a father up until you challenge yeah. something they believe. And another thing is, if they got more people in a building than you, why should they listen to you? And what they don't understand about a father is, I'm not here to have an arms race on who has more people sitting in a yeah. building. And as long as you got more people in your building, I can listen to you. That's not what a father is. Those are mentors and teachers. Yeah. Go find somebody to help you build your church bigger. I ain't got a problem with that. A father anchors you to who you are. Your character. A father anchors yeah. you to your character. You will never outgrow your father. You'll outgrow mentors, and you'll move from one level yes. to another level. to another. You will never outgrow no, your, a father. Your father can still jerk your, your chain. Your father will jerk your chain. Yep. And when you think you all that, and when he, when you think you're like, it's like Samuel when he came back to Saul. I remember when you were small, small in your in own your eyes. Own eyes. Yep. Sat Saul, when Samuel first started talking to him, Samuel was a prophet. Saul was a nobody. Mm-hmm. Saul was a king. Mm. Samuel. Yep. You know, I got too much influence now. Mm. And uh, influence without a guide, that's scary. And so these are these are some things that I see that that are troubling, and I felt like I need to speak yeah, to it. And I'm thankful. <laughs> I'm thankful for the truth of this weekend we're about to approach. The es- the true essence of what it really yes. is that the, will be proclaimed boldly at redemption. Yes, I, I there was a high price to pay. Yes. for my life, and I couldn't pay it, and only a spotless lamb. 
-hmm. spilling holy blood, redeemed my life. There was a death and resurrection. And I am grateful for that it. That redeemed me from the pit. And uh, the fact is, it needs to be preached. And then after it is preached, disciples need to be made. Yeah. And that means you're going to have to speak the lifestyle of God into their present lifestyle, and it is going to be bumpy. Yeah. It's going to be bumpy. But you're not in charge of their rate of growth. You are in charge to preach the Bible without compromise. Right. And when we start compromising and skipping pages, then hope we become idol worshipers mm. because we don't worship the God of the Bible. We have a lifestyle we mm. want to live. Oh my. We pick the scriptures that mm. suit our lifestyle. Fit Jesus and into we fashion our life. a Jesus yeah. that suits our lifestyle. Right. And then we become an idol worshiper because that's not Jesus at all. No. And so I want to call everybody back to the true essence of the gospel this Easter. I told you I felt this week I've done 33 Easters mm -hmm. as a pastor. Feels like there we've done 3,300. Something, there's something <laughs> different about this week. I couldn't even have a planning meeting for crying. And a planning meeting. There wasn't nothing to cry about. We're, we're planning logistics, moving things around the stage. When this happens, light goes And I was weeping. Uh, on the plane, you saw me on the plane when I was going from West Coast to East Coast. I just immersed myself in, in the story. I read it from three different accounts. And uh, I want, I'm starting today, I told the Spirit of God, I want to read the Easter story every day all the way through to Sunday. Because I want, I want a rebirth of its true meaning in me. When you do 33 of them, mm -hmm. it can become it's familiar. True. And I want it to be like it's the first time I've been touched by yeah. the gospel and my heart was shaken and tears filled my eyes and there's a warmth in my soul and I knew he was near me. Yeah. And I just believe something special is going to happen this weekend, but I'm calling you guys to go with me. Go with me as people who speak it in an uncompromised fashion. Don't care how creative you get, that's fine. I don't care if you use props, that's fine. I don't care if you use videos, that's fine. I do some of that too. But when you finish however you do it, Make sure they've heard the real message. Amen. Because only the truth can make you free. That's it. The Nothing truth else. is what makes you free. It's been good. Yeah, it has. <laughs> so until yeah. next time, it's Ron and Hope Unfiltered. Real, real raw, and relevant. Raw, and relevant. Jesus healed my eye from jumping while we were having a podcast. <laughs> we love you. We'll see you guys later.